everyone has a different preference, if you will, when it comes to art. Something else that speaks to them stronger. Maybe a painting is something that draws you in, or music, or dancing. There's different aspects that your heart is more drawn to. Having um, the opportunity to do several different types of art is really cool to see which one speaks to different hearts. These dances are very much sacred in the sense that they all have that same component of striving to share the mysteries of our faith. The body is so intertwined with who we are, is how involved we are, and that inspires me as a dancer, as a mover, and when I'm able to also create choreography that speaks of these messages, it's really powerful, and it brings just like a different type of level of encounter. As a mother, I believe Our Lady entered into all aspects of Christ's life, his joys as well as his sufferings. And as I become a mother myself, it's, it's something that I'm gonna be learning about, but she not only had the joy of Christmas, but she walked that whole life with him and experienced even the cross. when the crucifix is shown where Christ is looking down and there is actually Our Lady at his side and she is holding a chalice to receive the blood that comes out of his side. And it's so profound because it's, it's very intimate and it's also expressing how much Our Lady knew that suffering and tasted that suffering too. Because as a mother, you suffer with your child there's just a special gift that motherhood is given to, to really experience much of what your child is experiencing. So when you see someone you love suffering, it's you suffer as well. She goes through that whole process of dying and rising because of her sharing of that suffering on the cross. So I grew up Catholic, I'm one of six kids. I'm the third, the oldest girl though, and our faith foundation was really established. Being homeschooled, we were able to have the freedom to kind of go different places, do a lot of extracurricular activities, able to kind of cultivate um, my faith, but also my artistic challenge. My mom is an artist herself and has creative inspiration in that. So we did have a lot of opportunity to have art lessons and just be inspired in that way. So that probably really started the wheels turning when it came to my um, art journey and just being inspired in that way. I would create birthday cards or Christmas cards and always draw them or just be outside creating art. I also loved dancing, so I continued dancing and creating and just kind of tapping into those things that inspired me. I had these artistic experiences as a kid. I was constantly creating, and I knew I loved that, but this desire to share the Lord became a huge part of my life. I'm very excited to be joining on this, this mission with my wife. Actually, for the past couple of years, I've gotten to do it full time. The mission of, of beauty and spreading beauty throughout. Right now, it's been the country, but we would love to spread beauty while I'm at God, right? Spread it throughout the whole world. So Paul joined me in this mission of beauty a couple of years ago. We got married in 2019. and. He was full-time a music therapist at the time at a children's hospital here. I just really encountered the Lord personally, um, more than I had growing up. Probably a deepening of my faith personally. In high school, I got to go on a retreat called Kairos. 
And it kind of really just shifted my vision of life, of, of what I felt called to focus on. I was discerning, you know, what, what to do for college. And I loved art and, and then the faith, because it was growing even stronger in my heart, was super important. And I wanted, I felt drawn to bring people to Christ. And it felt like art and the faith were two different things. I shifted and I went to art therapy, which is like counseling with the arts and I thought, okay, I could help people and uh, do some art here and maybe this will work. And I, I went throughout college with that focus. Um, but during my college time, I also had the opportunity to do uh, missionary work. So I traveled overseas, I went to Lebanon, India, different places in Europe and just continually wanted to bring people to Christ. I collaborated and worked with a mission company based in Philly. They travel around called The Culture Project and we would speak to students about human dignity and sexual integrity, and it was very faith-based. But again, I felt like art and faith were two different things, so I was like, Lord, how can they come together? I was traveling to Italy one year for dance. I was performing there, and I came across a school, and it was it's called the Sacred Art School, and that finally like lit a light bulb in me. Wow, I didn't... I didn't know sacred art could exist today in this day and age. I didn't know that's something, I didn't even realize that could be an option. I got to study oil painting and to focus on the faith and I felt like things finally zipped together. That I was able to um, bring what the Lord had in my heart of bringing people to Him with the arts, with the talent that He has given me. I would say I had a, a deep desire to articulate what I experienced in my heart in prayer. And seeing sacred art and seeing how they portrayed the mysteries of the faith and how they could share the faith in that way, I was inspired to say, oh, wow, I, I would love to be able to share what I've experienced in my own prayer life, my own faith journey. The Holy Spirit inspired me in prayer to, to just articulate visually what I was experiencing so that others could also, in a sense, taste what he was sharing and how he was speaking to me. It's exciting to see how he continually unfolds his particular calling for my life. When I studied in Italy, I learned a lot about the symbology behind different colors, even different flowers or items that speak about, it, it's telling us something deeper. Knowing some of that, I'll, I'll bring that into the image to speak about a mystery that's unfolding in my own heart. I'll be in prayer and I'm not necessarily thinking of trying to create a work, I'm learning something about the Lord and learning something about myself in relation to the Lord. A lot of times that'll come to me visually. So I'll have like an image or a scene that articulates further what I'm learning about who God is and who I am in relation to Him. And, and then I'm inspired to, to create an image that corresponds with that. And I'll pray about, uh, you know, how to um, compose it and what lighting, what colors, all that, how it speaks. I mean, I use real models to create whatever composition because I have to create that whole scene visually before I can even paint it. In the process of creating artwork, I often experience him continually teaching me and learning how he molds our own hearts in that way and how it's a journey and how so it's layer after layer and you look at it for a while and you come back to it and you tweak it and it's really contemplating where the Lord is leading and slowly but surely molding it into that final work. Because we could learn something, um, you know, he says something to us, we read it in scripture or we have an experience, but to really like become what he's asking us to become, it's a process. Um, but being able to be there and and allow yourself to get to that final work is key. So relatable to the spiritual life and what the Lord does to our own hearts. So I created an image called the one who gave myrrh, and it's an image of, an, of one of the magi holding the infant Christ child. 
during my time in Italy, kept encountering the Magi. If you go, if you ever go to Florence, Italy, you'll see a lot of paintings of them. And they kind of kept following me and it was beautiful. But um, as I prayed with this, these images, I felt the Lord teaching me, but particularly guiding me towards one of the Magi, traditionally known as Balthazar. And he's the one that has given myrrh to Christ. And I've learned about the symbolism behind these different gifts and they all signify something. But myrrh, myrrh is a symbol of uh, suffering. What the Magi was offering isn't just foretelling what's coming for Christ, but it is an offering of his own suffering to Christ. This painting kind of unfolds as, as a way of expressing what are we giving to Christ when we come to him as we contemplate that during the Christmas season. It's about really giving our full selves to him, not just the good and the moments that we want to put together and feel perfect, but our full selves which include the hardships, the suffering, but in turn receiving Christ's suffering. I mean, factually, I don't know if the Magi held Christ, but this is even just um, emotionally something I felt called to articulate, where it's an embrace, an encounter of each other's uh, full self, to really receive each other. As this painting unfolds, it, it just speaks to how so many of us have experienced suffering and how God's saying, come, I, I want to share that with you, but also I'm gonna ask you to share my suffering so we can really be united. That's what Christmas is. He came to us as a young babe entering into our world that's not perfect, that is a mess. He's very vulnerable and he wants to share with us all these burdens so that we can become free eventually to experience that heavenly joy. We both did to kind of join our talents, him as a musician and me as a painter, um, and to come together under this umbrella of beauty. I especially love encountering you, encountering all the people that we that we get to meet along the way as we're traveling from place to place on, on these tours and doing events. Um, we do retreats, we do talks, so we really get to in encounter a lot of the people. Um, and I always love hearing your stories afterwards. I really make it a point to uh, make music that has um, less distraction in it, there's more of a purity. Maybe all the voices aren't so tightly squeezed together. I like to have more space in the music and to, to really just be able to ground people as we go into adoration so that they could, again, so it doesn't distract away from the Lord. So he's always the center and it's just an invitation. It creates a space and it lifts people to really be able to encounter him. When you started to share online some classical music on the guitar and just different things and people's reactions is right. really took right. him back, which I think drew you more into the mission. And um, from there, we kind of began to walk on water because it's a big it's a big jump to go as a whole as a family to do full time ministry, really, just in the arts and see where the Lord leads. an opportunity to take a painting per se, sacred art, and asking the Holy Spirit, okay, what do you want to speak to me through this? How do you want to lead my heart? I felt drawn to begin to teach others how to do that, and these events encompass not only a presentation on beauty, but leading people into that Visio Divina. And my husband actually joins in too, and he's a musician, and he brings in um, that musical component that helps just, a, um, I guess, awaken a lot of different senses. And the means of using my artwork, my husband's music, will um, oftentimes these events are at churches so we can have the Blessed Sacrament exposed. So true beauty himself is present. The goal is to really just let go and be still 
And I love how the Holy Spirit leads. What we'll do is we'll load up Kate's five foot paintings into our van, load all our supplies, and we'll, we'll travel across the country uh, to individual churches. We try to make them as experiential as possible. So Kate will speak while uh, displaying her art so that people can experience it in a different way. I think another cool component is just going as a family on mission. So we'll travel across country with our van. Paul built this cool shelving system where I can slide my art in. It's neat because people see us doing it together. And I think that says volumes when people encounter just the, the familial, like family coming in ministry. Kate has a, a painting about Mary and, and the Eucharist, and that's definitely gonna be traveling with us all throughout the year. But we actually, we're trying something different this year uh, in collaboration. I wrote music specifically for that painting, and also a few other of, of her paintings. We're doing like, during adoration, uh, I'll actually be playing this song so that, just to help people enter into a, a meditative state so that they could uh, just, use the art, use the beauty to draw them in, to help them, to help them pray. A three-dimensional immersion into uh, that Visio Divina, what it's like to, to look at an image, to hear a sound that goes along with the image, that, that a lot of prayer that went into the process. So the, the music is designed to let everything else, all the distractions of life, of the world, all the worries to just settle. People who are attending these events, I see them kind of let their walls kind of come down and they really enter into that stillness. And that's where the encounter happens. It's really, it's the Holy Spirit, it's not me. I just share what he's given me. I guess creating that space for individuals and that umbrella of beauty is what I really have been drawn to do in using the sacred art that he's, he's allowing me to create. My wife and I create to help uh, to help influence culture in a different way than it's going right now. If you think about it, artists are changing the trajectory of history based on the quality of the art, based on the excellence. How that art hits the heart of people. That's kind of exciting about this whole mission. I feel like we're on the cutting edge, following Christ and just seeing how the Holy Spirit unfolds this. I've learned that God has become man for me to really invite me in to his beauty, into a world that I ache for, that we all ache for. The fact that he has become man for us enables us to enter back into who he is as God. If we say yes, if we repent, if we enter into that, we're able to literally enter into who he is. He's in that manger. It's foretelling that he wants to be consumed, which sounds so strange, but there's a mystery there of, of literally allowing our very physical and spiritual bodies to unite with who he is. And the fact that he became man is what enables us to do that. The hope is to radiate Christ. The hope is to express his beauty, his love, his beckoning his invitation for them to also be one with him. <laughs>